everyone, Mark Ambrosio here from Drums by Mark, and I'm making a video today on setting up your drums, positioning them, changing ahead, tuning ahead, and picking things for your drum set that work for you. I made this video a couple weeks ago, but I decided to redo it only because I didn't really like the way I looked or acted, and there was a couple things that I sort of breezed through that really should have spent, I should have spent more time on them. So. Hopefully this video will redeem the last one as the other one has been deleted and is now in a black hole in cyberspace somewhere. All right. One thing I've noticed on Skype the last couple months doing uh, Skype lessons, particularly because of the COVID-19 quarantine, I've been seeing a lot of drum sets of my students in their practice rooms set up in very interesting ways. I've noticed tom-toms that are like this. Uh, I've seen floor toms that are completely like in the next county. The hi hat and the snare drum is like way over here. And uh, a lot of you sometimes are wondering why you are not playing really good or why you are not uh, able to overcome certain obstacles with, with your playing, whether it's just speed or agility around the set. So I'm going to sit here at my set and explain a couple of principles that are very important. Now, if you're used to having your drum set set up a certain way, and that's all you've ever known, that's going to be comfortable. Um, it, it's almost, I hate to say it, it's like a bad habit. It's so comfortable, you can't picture it being any other way. So for me, asking you to get out of your comfort zone, I do understand how that feels. It's the same thing when you were told how to hold a spoon correctly or a pencil, it's not going to feel comfortable at first, but down the road, that's your default way of holding those objects or using those, those type of things. So the same is true with your set. So you notice my drum set here is set up to where I don't have to bend or stoop or reach anything. Everything is pretty much like a cockpit of an airplane. My hi-hat, you'll notice, is at uh, the 10 o'clock position if this was 12, 6, 9, and 3. And I have it that way so that when I play a backbeat, my stick is not blocking, my right stick is not blocking my left stick. And so I have free range of motion that way. It also puts my bass drum pedal and my hi-hat pedal similar to like gas and clutch on a car, for those of you who drive a, a manual transmission. Okay. But that's pretty much just the basics. Now, you don't have to have your symbols everything the way I have it here. This just works for me. But the principle is just make sure that your drums are level, that you can fly across them quickly. There's no weird angles that you're trying to get across. And um, always make sure that you're sitting erect. Try not to slouch. I still slouch here and there. So uh, I'm making sure I'm not a hypocrite. But yeah, you want to make sure your shoulders are back and that you're... you're ready to deliver. And it's also the same as Todd Zuckerman says that you, you want to pretend that you're sitting at a table, you can cut meat, you can type, you can write. You want to have that same sense of comfort when you're sitting at your drum set like you do at a desk or a table because this basically is uh, your workstation. Snare drum really should be belly button uh, level and I have a lot of students that sometimes they, they cringe when I say that but really when you're going down in this motion, anything past your belly button, you're now, you're now wasting energy. You're, you're now cutting your stroke um, in, in a way that's not going to be um, efficient for you. The same with it being too high. If it's too high, you're limiting the full force of impact just according to natural human physics. That's all it is, okay? So just consider that uh, when, you're, when you're setting up your drums. And it, folks, it's really hard to mess up your drum set, you know. Don't be afraid to loosen things and raise things and angle things. That's the way, uh, you know, you do it. Now, I was a little bad a few minutes ago. I was just tweaking these things without loosening them. You should always loosen your, your hardware before, before you start uh, swiveling them around and moving them. All right, I want to talk a little bit about uh, heads and changing a head and tuning a head. So I'm going to be using my beautiful Yamaha Stage Custom TomTom -tom today as, uh, as my main model. And uh, this drum is 
primarily new. I, I've used it on a couple recordings, but the heads are just in pristine shape lately. And um, if your drum heads look like English muffins, if they're full of moon craters, don't even try to tune it, just get new heads, okay? Getting new heads is not rocket science. Uh, you can buy them on Amazon, you can buy them on Musician's Friend, you can go to Guitar Center here in town. We also have Musical Round that you can go to. Uh, and if you're not really sure what size your drum head is, you get a tape measure. Measure inside, inside the rim. Not rim to rim, because then you're, that's going to add an extra half inch or so. Okay, so this, this is a standard 12 inch Tom Tom. Now, I get asked all the time, what kind of head should I use? I don't care. <laughs> I use Aquarian Studio X's on these Tom Toms, but I'm going to be completely honest. I went with those uh, last time because they were on special through Musician's Friend. And I never tried them, and it was a good deal. So back in the day when I started uh, playing the drums, when there was, you know, covered wagons on the earth, there wasn't a huge selection of drum heads. It was basically, everything was pretty much Remo. Remo, white-coated ambassador or diplomat, black dot, uh, the hydraulic pinstripe. There wasn't really a lot. You have basically thick heads and thin heads. But nowadays, there's fiber skin, there's colored ones, and a lot of it is really just so these companies can make money. Uh, I'm just calling out what it is. I'm pretty basic. I'm pretty meat and potato. I like thick heads on my Tom Tom batter side. I like thinner heads for the resonant side, like uh, pretty much uh, like, a, like a diplomat or an emperor. Just a thinner head. That's it. Uh, I usually like to go white coated for the snare drum just in case I'm doing brushes and I, and I need that shh sound. But that doesn't mean that you have to have a white-coated head on your snare drum, okay? Bass drum, same thing. I like to have thick head for the batter and a thinner head for the resonant, especially with a hole cut out in the front so I can stick a microphone in there. If you're playing a jazz gig, you probably do not want to put a lot of padding in your bass drum. Most of us play pop or rock, so we do put a little bit of padding in there just to get a nice, good gut punch uh, when, you're, when you're playing playing your bass drum. All right, so you got your new heads, you're gonna put heads on, or let's say you're just not happy with how your drums sound and you wanna tune them. So the first thing you wanna do is you grab your drum key, make sure that, your, that the head that you're not tuning is on your lap, because you only wanna be hearing one head at a time. That's very, very important. Can't stress that enough. So it's on my lap, or you can set it on the ground. So if you have a brand new head, you've taken the other one off, and you want to make sure that when you take it off, you go across like a star pattern. When you're loosening or tightening, you want to make sure that the, the tension on the head is even going up and down. Okay, so you put your brand new head on, you've tightened slowly, you know, one crank at a time. You want to get that new head super, super tight, and you're going to hear the, the, the glue that is attached to the rim, you're gonna hear that crackle and pop a little bit. So I would recommend get your head really, really tight, press down, you're gonna hear more cracking and popping, loosen it all the way back down again, and then start the tuning process. Now, for me, this is the batter head. I traditionally like my tom-toms to be tuned relatively low, which means I'm not gonna be cranking them down too much. I'm going to be um, just getting my stick here and tapping around. Now you notice I have my thumb in the dead center part of the drum because I want to really isolate the frequencies. So we can already hear that this one is a little off. Pretty much it. Now you can tune your drums to exact notes if you want to, or if your band is recording and you want to make sure the tom toms are sympathetic, you can tune your tom toms to whatever like a major opening chord is or the key signature. You don't have to do that. I've done that in the past, but I usually just try to make sure that my head 
is in tune with itself. That's it. Making sure that the tension in front of each tension rod is the same as the one next to it. So the bottom head is a little bit tighter than the top head. This one's a little off. There we go. Now it's in tune. And I would do that around the entire drum. So your tom-tom should have a nice dun, dun, dun. If you have several tom-toms, dun, 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 dun. You can tune them to thirds, however you want to do it. Just make sure that your, your biggest drum is not higher sounding than your smaller drum, because I, I do see that a lot. All right, snare drums are a little bit different. Your snare drum should be, your snare drum batter head should be a little tighter, the bottom head should be a little loose, or loose or medium tension. Stuart Copeland from the police, I remember he used to have that, that top head cranked down super tight, and he had the bottom head, the snare head, almost a little, uh, a little looser, almost really loose. So he got a really nice uh, crack out of that snare drum. But just make sure that you, know, you find a, a sound that you like, but that the head is in tune with itself. Be really careful when you're tuning the bottom head because uh, the bottom head of a snare drum is very, very thin so that the snares rattle. And you gotta be really, really careful with those when you put them on a stand or when you're just tuning them. And bass drum, like I said, if I didn't mention it already, um, the bass drum should have uh, a little bit of padding in there. Uh, if you're playing a lot of rock or pop, uh, that way you get a nice gut punch from, from the bass drum. Uh, if you're playing jazz, maybe you want to have that a little bit more open with no padding. All right. Last thing. You notice I have a lot of different uh, symbols here. I have a, a Zildjian, I have another Zildjian, a Peisty. And then over here, it's kind of hard to see, but I have, uh, I have a China with two splash symbols stacked. And that is a combination of uh, Zildjian, Peisty, and Sabian all together. So another question I'm always asked is, what kind of uh, cymbals should I play, or what brand? Whatever floats your boat. I like Peisty, I like Zildjian, I like Plinal, I like all of them. And if I was ever blessed to have uh, one of these companies in, in, you know, ask if I want an endorsement, I would drop at whoever was the first one to ask. Whoever was to ask me first, I would go with that brand. I'm not one of those, I have to play Zildjian. I have to play Peisty. I think all high-end cymbals sound great. Now, without an endorsement, I do have the benefit of mixing and matching. So just know that, be that the, the benefit of, of um, an endorsement is mainly, you know, if you're going through cymbals like tissue paper, it's nice to know that you have a, a fresh supply. But normally, to get free cymbals, you have to be someone like Chad Smith or Dave Weckl, someone who is super high profile and... It, you know, basically that brand is getting free advertising every night. But a lot of endorsements, you're basically just getting a discount on the gear. So even with that, there's a fine print that says, you know, you have to use only that brand when you play out. So, you know, there's, there's pros and cons to, um, to what you use, uh, whether you're endorsed or not. This drum set here is just a, a pearl knockoff, but... I think I have it tuned and, and, uh, and sounding pretty good because I know how to put heads and, uh, and I know how to, uh, how to uh, tune them and make them sound good. So I want to wrap this up. I don't want to yap too much. Uh, if you're interested in lessons with me, either here in Albuquerque or via Skype nationwide, and by the way, I also use Google Duo, uh, Google Classroom, Zoom, whatever you're more comfortable with. Skype is really my preferred way. Uh, I like the fact that you can record the lesson on there. But hey, reach out. Uh, the information is at the bottom of this video if you want to just say hi, or if you have questions, or if you just want to talk philosophy of drumming. You do not have to be a student of mine to do that. So take care and have a wonderful day. And remember, wherever you go, there you are.